I, today, am just going to give a few simple things that you need to know about Messiah Masura. Because... Back in the day, Masaya Masura kind of got his start in wanting to make video game related content because of Apple II. Or you can balance your checkbook. Kids can teach themselves arithmetic. Yeah, that, that Apple II. He found this program on it that was called Kaleidoscope that made really cool trippy colors. And he thought, you know how this could be better? You know how we can make this better? Fast forward a little bit to 1983. At this point, he's already graduated college with his degree in sociological in industrial sociological what the f industrial sociology. But he makes band, and the band actually does pretty pretty well. Size actually is like kicking ass in Japan. Like they're doing pretty good for themselves. They did two animes. One was called Toy, and the two songs they did were Lemon no Yuki. <laughs> Cubic Lovers. They also did one of the City Hunt games, which is Angel Names. Really, really freaking love Angel Nights, so there we go. Oh, he's listening to a lot of techno at the time. And he stumbles across Paul Hardcastle. This man is known for early EDM music. Specifically, he's known to be one of the earliest people to heavily utilize sampling. <laughs> Sura was like, yes! Yes! and as he's playing around, you know, being in his band, playing around with sampling, he discovers, hey, voices have the most interesting thing, you know, have the most interesting samples. Yeah, I think you can see where that's going to go. So let's go ahead to his first game. He decides he's just going to make an interactive game for his band. Light novel as title. Seven Colors, Legend of Psy City. I had to read it off of my notes here. This is his first game. It's a point and click adventure game where you have to use lyrics to figure out how to progress through the game. It was pretty interesting at the time and it actually won a lot of Grand Prix awards. During its stint in popularity. He also did two other games before he did Parappa under <laughs> Tool X and Tuning Glue. Tuning Glue was made especially available for the Macintosh. <laughs> Computers aren't what they were. Mac reigns supreme for the most part. Computers were not where they are now. So he gets a Parappa the Rapper. In the 90s, he dissolved the band and stopped commercial work. And he staked everything on combining music and video into a new kind of game. It wasn't easy. Remember I mentioned Paul Powercastle? That was the basis of this game. He started playing around with the concepts. He knew it had to be a rap game. Because rap just worked better for samples. All right, fun fact, since I don't talk about Parappa 2 and we're talking about rappers, in Parappa the Rapper 2, like when you hear the opening, pa -da -ba -da -ba, that's De La Soul. And double a Japanese R&B artist. Also, there was a special promotional album that was called Parappa the Party Mix, and it's, oh man, it, this shit's tight, not gonna lie, I listened to it, it's awesome, amazing. It was a collaboration between Tommy Boy Records and Sony to help sell more copies of Parappa the Rapper 2 in Japan. <clears throat> okay, I'm done. We didn't have anybody with console game experience. Some of the companies we were working with almost went out of business. One after another, there was all kinds of accidents and problems. A key team member even ended up in the hospital after a traffic accident. The entire two years were Now, like they get through the development of Parappa, and at the very end, Sony decides we're only going to release 20,000 copies total because they, they didn't believe in the project. But yeah, my mans did, and uh, their expectations were blown out of the fucking water. 
Parappa the Rapper easily sold 30,000 units a week, making it one of the hugest games for the PlayStation. And I mean, Kimi no koe ga hoshi. Hey, Gakuto! Pour chanter, danser en rythme, vous allez vous entraîner sur Parappa the Rapper. A chaque fois qu'après. Now I really gotta go in the rain or in the snow. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky. Parappa the Rapper, great new music video game. In the rain or in the snow. You Once the you played it, you can't get it out of I mean, your head. Come on, Sony had that fucking game where it was their PlayStation All Stars and Parappa is a fighter, and that it was a smash. It was a Smash Brothers ripoff, and Parappa was one of the fighters. <laughs> Was. Now, after the release of Parappa the Rapper, people were jonesing for more. So then that's when they went into the development of Um Jammer Lammy. And Um Jammer Lammy. You're the same as Parappa, except you're playing with a guitar instead of a. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. Hit me. I actually played Lammy first before I played Parappa. <laughs> now, before Parappa 2, there was actually a gap. He created a really interesting game that was called Viv Ribbon. <laughs> wanted the idea of how can I take the music experience further? Oh wait, how about we just make the music make the stage? And that's what he did. This was originally done as a Mercedes-Benz advertising campaign, and I don't know, some shit happened with the car, so he was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the game and release it. And it did well. It only released though in Japan and Europe. Now there's one thing about Viv Ribbon that's really cool I left out. Not only could you, uh, the music in the game make the levels, no, 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 you could load the game on your PlayStation, eject it, and then it's already loaded. You put your own CD in there, and you make a level based on your CD. Um, I don't know if they still have this exhibition, but the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, had Bib Ribbon in its collection. Meaning, you know, because video games are art, and I'm not going to argue with anybody who wants to say video games are not art, because His company <laughs> made a variety of games, not just the Parappa Multiverse. We're going to call it that, because, uh, yeah. They made a lot of other games outside of that. They, they made just a laundry list of just a long list. Look at this. Look at this shit. It's so fucking long. Most of them were like Tamagotchi games. I mean, I think it's pretty long. A lot of different ones. The most interesting one is Musica for the iPod. Again, man's trying to push those boundaries of music and creativity. And I'm like, I'm here for it. He's here for it. People have been for years trying to petition to get a new Rap Multiverse game. However, he did do something, and I backed this. He and Keiichi Yano of Kitaru Man tried to create a new game, a new rhythm game, a rhythm RPG kind of game, which would call. It seems like it was a perfect storm, like. Of it should have succeeded, but it didn't. They didn't quite make their funding, and the project didn't happen. Now, I really, really enjoy... Like, I would love to them to try it again now. I don't know, it feels like rhythm games are getting a resurgence, and I think it's worth a shot. Like, thanks to games like Friday Night Funkin', I, I think there is a chance that if he redid this Kickstarter, these two redid this Kickstarter, I don't think music and games would be as closely intertwined together as they are because of him. I mean, think about it, most rap wasn't really in the video game until probably like the early 2000s. And I don't know, he, he deserves so much more, but I wanted to make this video for months. But I was nervous, and honestly, I probably will redo this video later because there's so much more about him, and he's just such a cool guy. He loves his fans. You can tell he really just loves music, because really, that's what he's been up to. He just keeps making music. You can follow him on SoundCloud. I'll link that below. And if you really are feeling fucking nostalgic, he's got the Parappa soundtracks there, too. Specifically, uh, Parappa 2 and Lammy.
Like, subscribe, whatever. You do you. And I'll talk to you in the next one. All right. Bye.